Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light, sanctify this new candle and grant that this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, is are the times and the ages to him be glory and dominion throughout all ages. Amen. Through his holy and glorious wounds may Christ the Lord guard and preserve us. light of Christ. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets sound salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good always and everywhere with our whole heart, mind, and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of his Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept this, our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and lives and reigns forever and ever. Tonight you'll be using the Book of Common Prayer, the red book found in the pews, and I know it's a little dim, but it'll lighten afterwards, and the reader will give you the page number to find the Psalms to found along. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth what was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. <clears throat> and God saw that it was good. <clears throat> and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. <clears throat> and God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild things of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps down upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. 
God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 136 responsively, breaking out the asterisks. It can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 789. The psalmist verses 1 through 9 and 23 through 26. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his, for his steadfast love. O oh, oh, give thanks to the God of gods. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy forever. who alone does great wonders, for his mercy forever. who by understanding made the heavens, for his mercy forever. who spread out the earth on the waters, for his mercy forever. who made the great lights. The sun to rule over the day, the moon and stars to rule over the night. It is He who remembered us in our low estate and rescued us from our foes, who gives food to all flesh. O oh, give thanks to the God of heaven. For his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created, yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbles himself to share our humanity. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angels of God, who is going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night, 
and one did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Canticle 8, the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider is he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God and I will praise him. The God of my people and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. The love is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness? You stretched forth your right hand. You are swallowed in love. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. You will bring them in and plant them. On the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign. Forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit.
The Valley of Dry Bones, a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews, sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe, breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. We will read Psalm 143, found on page 798 in the Book of Common Prayer, breaking responsively. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Do not enter into judgment with your servant. For the enemy has pursued me. Therefore, my spirit faints within me. I remember the days of old. I stretch out my hands to you. Answer me quickly, O Lord. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries. sin into righteousness, out of death into life. Grant that those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit will and power to proclaim you to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Gathering of God's People, a reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. 
Sing loud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Psalm 98 is on page 727 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will read it responsively. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm. The Lord has made known his victory. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the harp and the voice of the song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King of the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the floods clap their hands. He will judge the world with righteousness. Let us pray. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that the things which were cast down are being raised up and the things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things are made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 292 in the Book of Prayer, please stand. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear sisters and brothers, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his life and raised to him with newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his work and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died. God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins. Keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen to me. Alleluia. Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The epistle is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. 
I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? 
Christ is risen, and you and death are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast out. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is empty of his dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. We stand for the prayers of people. God of the bright and morning star, God of the rising sun, God of the darkness banished, we praise and worship you. Hear our prayers offered with hope and Easter joy this morning, asking, risen Lord, hear us. For empty tombs, thank you. For disciples running with good news, thank you. For your presence, alive, powerful, resurrected, thank you. We celebrate your victory over death, over all the powers that would defeat us. Risen Lord, hear us. Help us to grasp resurrection, to understand its power, to see its force at work in our world, overturning evil empires, changing the hatred within us, moving the world slowly, forcefully, bending us towards love and truth. Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. us. On this day of great gladness, empower us to be your ambassadors, proclaiming good news. Good news in our kitchens and living rooms, good news in the offices and workshops, good news in the fields and factories. Help us to be that good news, walking softly on this good earth, caring gently for all people, living hopefully into your kingdom. Risen Lord, hear us. Today, we think of all who are grieving, especially those on our parish prayer list and for the sick and dying, and for places in the world that are torn by war and bloodshed, especially Ukraine and its people. Risen Lord, hear us. In this world of broken hopes and dreams, we catch sight of your kingdom come in the person of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns in us forever. Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. Amen. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also you. Offer each other a sign of that great peace. to welcome you here this evening for this great day, this great feast, this great Easter day. Now, if you're an Easter junkie and can't get enough, you can come over to Yankton tomorrow at 9 a.m. for more of the same. And I encourage you to do so if you will. There's a slight hymn change. I just made it. Instead of 193, we're going to sing 207 because it feels like a 207 night, doesn't it? So hymn number 207.
intentions for tonight are for the repose of the souls of Dorothy and Walter Reed and Bernadette Westendorf. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which was given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in us, in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Walter and Dorothy and Bernadette and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven now. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Alleluia. The 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us of these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him and to you and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptisms has raised us from sin into newness of life, Make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin and the true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.